morning everyone and uh, I am Smita Avasti and I am a research scientist in uh, Uniform Service University of Health Sciences in USA. So first of all I would like to express my gratitude towards organizers for uh, giving me this opportunity to talk about my uh, um, work at this platform excuse me let me know if let me see if it is working i can see yeah it's working i hope it's working so uh yeah so our lab is uh, mainly interested in unraveling the initial oops, sorry so our lab is mainly interested in the in, uh, uh, in, uh, finding the molecular mechanism of initial events of homologous recombination and uh, uh, the topic of my talk today is PRDM9, a player that changes the genetic map. So PRDM9 uh, is the uh, member of a protein family PRDM. Uh, that group of protein is defined by having a um, zinc finger array and PR set domain. And they uh, are mainly um, involved in methyl methylate the histone targets by directly bind to the, binding to them or by uh, recruiting other methyl transferase to them and that's how that's why they these uh, members play a very important and vital role in developmental processes by regulating the gene expression and the prdm9 protein it it involves it involves in homologous recombination an important step or important event in uh, meiosis so before going through the talk or, before, or about my work uh, i would like to give some background brief information uh, about meiosis and homologous recombination so meiosis as everybody knows uh, it's a specialized cell division very essential for uh, um, sexually uh, reproducing uh, organism and um, it involves in to, it, it has two steps meiosis one which is reductional division reduces chromosomes by half and second is meiosis two that is equational division that distribute chromatids into daughter cells evenly so meiosis uh, starts after spermatogonium or in germ cells after spermatogonium or oogonium they grow and mature into primary gametocytes like primary spermatocytes in male and primary is oocytes in female and then uh, after meiosis one they become uh, um, secondary two spermatos two secondary spermatocytes and two secondary oocytes are formed they undergo meiosis two the second part of meiosis and form four chromatid uh, spermatid four uh, daughter cells uh, with the haploid genome and uh, The meiosis is uh, each stages stage of meiosis is for is divided into four stages: prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. The prophase of meiosis one, that is four phase one, is a very prolonged phase, and it again subdivided into five stages: lepto, leptotene, gigotene, phacotene diplotene and dikinesis so during this pro phase one actually uh, the whole the chromatin starts condensing forming chromosomes and chromosomes from two parents form they form a pair called homologous pair of chromosomes they exchange a genetic information and also called as crossover and those information they takes place exchange of those uh, genetic information uh, sorry Exchange of genetic uh, information takes place at certain sites called chasmita, and the whole process is called homologous recombination. So, if we give the definition of homologous recombination, so homologous recombination is a meiotic process where a double strand DNA break is repaired by exchange of genetic material between homologous chromosomes, resulting in crossover. So, how what's the mechanism? How it takes place? So. It's in, it is initiated by a topoisomerase like enzyme SPO11. It, re, it recruits on the DNA 
at certain specific sites and creates programmed DNA double stranded DNA breaks so double stranded DNA breaks so, uh, I I will say from now onwards DSBs so the five prime of DSBs is rejected and uh, a single stranded three prime tail is formed at those DSBs then DMC1 and RAT51 these are DSB repair protein they come on the side and they form a nucleoprotein filament with single stranded three prime tail and uh, and these protein this nucleoprotein filament it helps in homologous search in the homologous chromosomes nearby homologous the next the, another pair of uh, the second pair of uh, chromosome sorry homologous chromosome uh, and then do strain in strand invasion and form a d loop formation like from red to blue so um, that d loop intermediate undergoes various phases of uh, maturation and result in either reciprocal exchange of uh, homologous chromosomes fragment called as crossover or non-reciprocal exchange of chromosomal uh, homologous chromosomal uh, patch small patch that is cr not crossover so these uh, homologous uh, recombination they occur all over the genome but there are certain sites where the rate of recombination or the frequency of recombination is much higher than the other and those sites are called hotspots or recombination hotspots or we can say DSP double stranded DNA break hotspots so as if you if you paid attention if you have a uh, if you remember I said the SPO11 created programmed double stranded break so why it is called program because it is controlled or it is pre-decided where those DNA uh, DSPs has to be formed so though now comes the you know uh, role of PRDM9 so PRDM9 is a protein which controls where these hotspots needs to be formed PRDM9 how it does so so PRDM9 is a single polypeptide chain it's a protein uh, it has three domains the DNA binding domain which has multiple zinc fingers ranging from 9 to 14 depending on number changes depending on different species PR set domain that has as 3 K4 trimethyl uh, methyl transferase activity and K crab domain which is which has gene silencing gene silencing activity so PRDM9 binds to DNA through its uh, uh, DNA binding zinc fingers to a very specific sites and uh, trimethylate the histone of adjacent nucleosome those trimethylate marks are recognized by uh, uh, DSB machinery by a known mechanism and SPO11 comes and create DSPs there so PRDM9 protein uh, it's a very as, as you know already that it has uh, multiple zinc fingers so it is highly polymorphic with the, uh, in the in its zinc finger domain both in terms of uh, number of zinc finger or the sequence they carry and because of uh, their highly uh, PRDM9 high polymorphic nature uh, two species having very close and very high level of sequence identity can have very different hot, uh, hot spot profile like human and chimpanzees and uh, not even not only this even uh, two individuals from the same species if have uh, different uh, alleles of PRDM9 have very different uh, distribution of um, recombination hotspots these hot uh, hot spots uh, controlled by PRDM9 they are very unstable and they erode and very fast themselves because uh, PRDM9 is very fast evolving gene and because and due to its high uh, rapid evolving nature the hot spots they emerge and dissipates very very quickly very fast 
and uh, after a multiple recombination events over the long evolutionary period uh, finally and they end up uh, in a new genome entirely di uh, very different from the, the ancestors and form a new species so prdm9 it it is a species in protein and it is the only species in protein known so far PRDM9 does not affect any gene expression or does not regulate the miRNA expression and it causes hybrid sterility. A hybrid with a heterozygous PRDM9 have very different DSB uh, you know, uh, profile or uh, DSB, uh, the distribution of uh, DSBs on both uh, chromosomes of a homologous pair and those DSBs since they are very different from in both strands cannot be repaired and that's how the uh, uh, meiosis is arrested and individual get, become sterile. So uh, in our lab we showed the, for the first time that these recombinational hotspots are uh, associated with S3K4 triboclate marks and we published a paper in 2010 in Nature. So how we did that, we uh, did uh, chromatin immunoprecipitation assay followed by next generation deep sequencing and it's a very, uh, this ChIP-seq is a very powerful tool to find out the whole genome wide uh, recruitment or localization of a protein and that ChIP-seq data with the with DMC1 and RAD51, those are DSB repair protein and binds are the DSPs. That's how they give the uh, uh, positions where hotspots are formed. And uh, so uh, this data we uh, visualize in a integrated human genome viewer, IGV. It's a very powerful, a very uh, wonderful uh, online tool. And it's a Java-based tool. Anybody can download in computer and see. It. So it gives the uh, you know the whole screenshot the uh, of uh, those protein recruitment in the whole genome anywhere. So like here in uh, uh, left panel of the uh, slide, uh, the chromosome uh, one on the top and the, its coordinate it's on the bottom and there are like spikes of DMC1 and RAD51 uh, proteins and these are like recruitment or enrichment after chip and that can be it can easily viewed on uh, this uh, various scale on these coordinates and the higher the spikes the strongest the hot spot and in the left in the right panel we see it like uh, this uh, over 94 percent of DSP hot spots are associated with S3K4 trimethylate marks and those are unique as those are not associated with S3K4 uh, trimethylate marks from liver. They are test specific or DGM cell specific. So, um, and uh, also uh, the S3K4 trimethylate marks are not only generated on the hotspots, they are several other uh, places also where S3K4 prime plate marks are generated and those are much stronger than in the uh, ma prime plate marks on hotspots. So hotspots are associated with the marks which are much weaker than those which are found on promoter regions. So now how we know means like this, these DSBs are controlled by PRDM9. So for this we did a study and we published this paper in 2011 Nature and we see uh, like uh, that PRDM9 uh, actually uh, directs the DSB machinery towards those trimethylation marks which it creates but when it's not present in the in like in PRDM knockout mouse uh, the DSB machinery actually by default uh, uh, directed towards the S3K4 trimethylation marks which are present and are in the promoter or functional genomic reasons. Those DSBs are, cannot be repaired and so meiosis is arrested and that's how that mouse becomes sterile. However, 
So we, we, we have seen like PRDM9 very essential for homologous recombination to occur, for uh, uh, meiosis to occur and uh, in a sense the mouse becomes sterile. But we have seen few reports available and where they showed that uh, PRDM9 is not it's an entirely uh, essential at least in some species for recombination. So PRDM in dogs or whole canine family is a pseudogene and it's a, the protein is non-functional and yet they have a hot spots and they are very stable over the evolutionary period. And as opposed to a house and a mouse and mammal which has PRDM9 and hot spots are very unstable. Okay, not only this, even a human, a, a woman from Pakistan was, uh, uh, had, she, she had PRDM, she was a PRDM9 uh, mutant and homozygous null for PRDM9 actually, uh, null mutant for uh, PRDM9 and still she was fertile. And uh, there are few studies about PRDM knockout rats and they were for subfertile. And also there are some organisms like yeast, bird and Arabidopsis employ for uh, hot spots and those are like PRDM9, PRDM9 independent uh, and these hotspots are usually located on uh, open chromatin associated with the uh, STK4 trimethylic sites. And in gray tall, gray short tail possum monodelphus domestica, the DNA binding domain of PRDM9 is truncated or PRDM9 is truncated, have no DNA, DNA binding domain, but it is uh, um, it has hot reduced number of hotspots uh, compared to other animals. So now let's take a deep dig and see what's happening uh, with the PRDM9 in those animals which have and which don't, species which have or, or they don't have any PRDM9. So like here we see. Um, Again, integrated genome viewer, we see the chipsic data on the chromosomes two of mouse, and we see real en enrichment of DMC read that gives uh, DSB hotspots and STK4 trimethylate read, and we see the signal is much less, much weaker than uh, STK4 trimethylate signal found on the promoter. So, um, hotspots are formed or associated with the STK4 trimethylate. But when PRDM9 uh, was uh, removed from the mouse, the hotspots, they move towards the trimethylate marks present on the promoter. And here we see they are also associated with CPG and CXXV1. Further, we see uh, where in the genome they, were, they, they are uh, present, uh, like, so they are usually present uh, the hotspot, the wild type hotspots in normal case, usually found on un, un methylated data. So methylated is more mutable because they are, uh, okay, and one more thing I want to tell that this uh, cytosine showed in red in CPG context, these cytosine are methylated. And when the, there is blue color, that means cytosine in CPG context is not methylated. So methylated uh, CPG islands or methylated DNA is more mutable because the methylated cytosine is deaminated, uh, deaminated, so um, and becomes thi thymine, and CG is converted into AT. So, okay, yep. Uh, yeah, and in knockout mouse, the PDA, in PRDM knockout mouse, the hotspot moved to unmethylated region where promoters are present. So now, why CXXC1 is important? So CXXC1 protein is a mammalian ortholog of yeast SPP1, which is S3K4 trimethylate or S3K6 trimethylate reader, it reads. And uh, presumably uh, PRCM9 uh, interacts with CXXC1 and it uh, helps hotspot to proceed to next phase of recombination. And uh, CXXC1, after knocking out CXXC1, 
we see a tremendous decrease of uh, SCK43 enrichment at DSB uh, or uh, DSB sites or uh, DNA band, DM, DMC1 binding site or decombinational hotspots. So, and uh, however, in some reports, this showed that uh, even lack of CXXC1 does not really affect any meiosis, suggesting there is some redundancy. And CXXC1 is, suppo is supposed to bind on unmethylated CPG uh, motifs to prevent targeting of uh, DNMT uh, to CPG islands. Okay, so we found that in mouse hotspots are found on methylated DNA where PRDM9 creates a CFK4 trimethylation mark and PRDM knockout mouse, PRDM9 knockout mouse, the hotspots are deflected towards the default S3K4 sites, trimethylate sites on promoter. And most of these promoters are located on unmethylated CPG island and 6 c one So now what happens in species where PRDM9 is not you know, there? So like in dog, in dog we see uh, very much seen that is similar to uh, PRDM knockout mouse. So we, in dog we see uh, the DMC1, uh, these are like re again real enrichment DMC1, uh, the um, hot recombination hotspot showing recombination hotspot, STK4 trimethylate reads and CXXC1. They all are associated with CPG islands on unmethylated region. And when we zoom in a little bit and we try to find out, okay, um, where, where are the, what are sites and where are they, are they on any promoter? So one thing is different from PRDM knockout mouse. Here is in dog, hotspots are associated with S3K4 peak on unmethylated region CPG island, uh, island and associated with CX61, but not on the promoter they are somewhere upstream to the promoter or maybe somewhere in intergenic. We are still studying, we are still doing those kind of analysis, finding annotations. And uh, so again, the whole genome wide, uh, the large scale data we want to see, okay, how much are uh, CPG island or uh, DMC1 hotspots or recombinational hotspots are associated with CPG island and uh, trimethylate marks. So we see 50% of the hotspots are formed over S3K4 trimethylate marks and CPGI. And then two third of the hotspots are actually over CPG islands and are associated with CXXC1. But if you see here, just 5% of the hotspots are associated with promoter. So they are not on the promoter. So they are somehow promoter regions are even protected from those GSPs to form, even though they are forming uh, on unmethylated regions and associated with CPG islands. So dog, uh, in dog, hotspots are formed over the SDK4 trimethylate marks and um, CXXC1 is associated with that. And unlike hotspots in PRDM knockout mouse, hotspots in dogs are not formed on promote, but seems to be in upstream region or some intergenic region. So these are my final thoughts. So we see PRDM9 dependent hotspots are formed on SCK4 trimethylate marks on methylated DNA and are unstable. Methylated DNA tends to um, undergo more change and mutation because cytosine in CPG island undergoes deamination and changes in thi to thymine. So then dogs seem to have uh, so dogs seems to have um, very different decombination as compared to other mammals. Dogs hot spots are formed over S3K4 trimethylate marks on CPG islands and on unmethylated DNA but far from the promoter. One more thing I want to add here, like a uh, dog has uh, approximately two to three fold higher CPG islands than mouse and human. And when we compare CPG associated uh, 
promoter associated cpg islands they are much less than human and mouse especially near essential and highly expressed gene so um, if the role of prdm9 is to uh, move the dsbs or recombination hotspots away from the functional elements as has been suggested in other species like in you know, mouse and human then the preferential loss of recombinogenic recombinogenic um, cpg islands near promoters in dog may indicate that you know sub selection is acting to uh, deflect the recombination from genic reason since the loss of prdm9 and loss of prdm9 may contribute to the ability of successfully hybridize the relevant divergent canine species like uh, dog and jackal and uh, cpg associated recombination regulation appears to be uh, an ancestral mo ancestral mode however this subject is uh, of debate so uh, yes that's it uh, is my uh, presentation and so i would like to uh, acknowledge uh, my uh, lab chief dr galina petkova for uh, her help and uh, Chiu Sun for helping uh, for doing all the experiments and uh, vet lab experiments and uh, the uh, Andrew Frank from uh, bioinformatics division from our institute and for giving me uh, suggestions providing some tools and uh, letting me work on Google Cloud and uh, then our uh, I would also like to give thanks to uh, Dr. Dan Camerino Camerini Otero from NIH, they are my our collaborator, and Kevin Brick, Florence and Daisy from their, from his lab, and um, actually he is the one who provided us the um, access through the NIH high, put, high throughput computing system, so I, I could do all the bioinformatic analysis there. And finally, uh, thank you all for having time, uh, giving your precious time and listening my work. And if you have any questions and concerns, please um, email to me to my uh, uh, email address. Uh, Dr. Mona Saxena had my email address. And uh, thank you. Thanks again.